Okay guys, here's a video for all the solved by elimination problems. I'm going to put it all in one video. Okay. Um, the easier situation is if your equations are already set up such that you have this situation right here. I, then I have it color coded on the screen. I have a positive 4x and a negative 4x. Because how we use elimination is both of our equations are in standard form, something x plus something y equals a number. And what we're essentially doing is combining the two equations together. And how that helps us is that if one of the variables has a positive 4x and a negative 4x, those will cancel out. So then I can take 5y and 10y and make 15y and 23 and 22 make 45. So I'm just combining together. Now don't think you're going to always add or always subtract. You have to pay attention to what signs are there. Everything's positive so far. Okay, then what I have left is a one-step equation. I'm just going to divide both sides by 15 and I get y equals 3. So these start off pretty easy. Two of your variable terms cancel you combine the rest and then you have you're left with a one step equation to solve okay that's just phase one so phase two we got to sub that in and solve for the other variable so four x just pick an equation plus five but instead of y i'm going to sub in the three that i just found equals 23 5 times 3 is 15. Carry everything else down. And now I have a two step. So subtract 15 both sides. Divide both sides by 4. And x equals 2. So I have my solution. of y equals 3 and x equals 2. And if you write them like this, the order doesn't matter. You can put them in the order that you solved for them. However, if you do coordinate form, okay, you have to put the 2 first and then the 3, even though you solved for them in reverse order because x always comes before y in coordinate pairs. And remember when we solved by graphing, the answer was where they crossed. Okay. Okay. Checking. Same idea. We've got to take the other equation, negative 4x plus 10y equals 22. And sub in. So instead of x, and watch the letters. Match up the letter with what you're subbing in. Because you may be subbing in in a different order than you solved. And y was 3. And now I want to know if that's going to match. So that's negative 8 plus 30, which is 22. So they do match. Okay, so that's the first day. Because you're doing stuff like that. The second day is tougher because if we look at the problems that we're given, there's nothing that I can go ahead and just cross off because if I, I can't 2x and 6x, they don't cancel each other out. They make 8x. And a positive 3y and a negative 6y, they don't cancel each other out. I mean, the signs are opposite, but 3 and 6 are not the same number. So we can't just start off by canceling something out, okay? What we have to do is use multiplication to f make a match. Like, for example, wouldn't it be nice if I could somehow, let me switch, make this color green, there we go. Wouldn't it be nice if this could be a six? That would have been perfect because then the sixes could cancel out. 
well, I can't just do that. I can't just draw over it. But here's what I can do. What I can do is I can multiply this entire equation by two. Because then I would get four X plus six Y equals 26. And by multiplying that top equation by two, I got a six. Now, how did I know I wanted to multiply it by two? Well, because that would make a six. Okay. Now, I can cross out my six y's and get 10x equaling 50. Divide by 10, divide by 10, x equals five. And then from there forward, the rest of the problem really works the same way, okay? I would pick an equation, okay? So that's phase one. Phase two, two times five plus three y equals 13. So that's 10. Now I've got a two step. Divide by three, divide by three, y equals one. Okay, so my solution is x equals five and y equals one. If I wanted to write in it in coordinate pair form, I could. Just make sure the x comes first and the y comes second. And our check. So six times five minus six times one. And we wanna know if that equals 24. So 30 minus six is in fact 24. So I know that I did this right, okay? So that's kind of a medium level problem because all I had to do is multiply the top equation by two and then I got sixes to match and cancel. The hardest level of this is when I don't have anything, like I can't make a two into a three and I can't make a four into a five. So just taking one equation and multiplying it won't work. I'm gonna have to multiply both equations by something. Here's what I re recommend, okay? I know I'm gonna have to multiply both equations. Pick a variable, either the n or the p, all right? I'm gonna pick the n. I tend to go smaller numbers because smaller numbers are easier to do, okay? So I'm going to take my three and my two. I notice they are already opposite signs, okay? So I'm just gonna take the two, multiply it up here. No, not negative two, just two. And my three and multiply it here. I don't want to copy the signs. If the signs are already opposite, I don't want to mess with that, okay? So I just want to turn both of these into the same number. So I'm going to take the two up here, pull the three down here, leave the signs alone. So then I'm going to distribute that to everything. So 6n minus 10p equals 28. Then I'm going to do the second distribute right underneath it. Negative 6n, ooh, 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 look at there, 6n's cancel, plus 12p equals negative 24. Now I have these set up in a way that I can cross out because now I have opposites. So negative 10 plus 12 is a 2p, 28 minus 24 is four, divide by two, divide by two, p equals two. 
Okay, the rest of the problem proceeds in the exact same way. So I'm not gonna make this video uber long by finishing the problem. I just wanted to help get you started. Like what if I don't have one number that I can easily multiply to make the other? Yeah, I'm giving you a strategy for that. Um, I'm gonna, tr let's see if I have one more I wanna do with you. This is actually a medium problem uh, because I, I can make, I can either make three into a six or I can make five into a 10 and it doesn't matter um, to me, which again, I, I tend to go for the smaller numbers. Um, that's just me. So if I wanna make this three into a six, I'm gonna multiply it by two. However, let's look ahead to this. Let's pretend that that's what I decide to do. Two times three A is six A plus 20C equals 96. Problem. The problem is that I don't, I have the sixes that match, but I need one of them to be negative. So if you have that situation, what you're gonna need to do is multiply by a negative of it. So negative three, negative two times three A is negative six A, but you have to carry it through the whole problem. Negative two times plus 10 would be minus 20 C, and negative two times 40, it would be negative 96. Okay, so it's not enough to just get the same number. You also have to think about signs. So if the signs are already opposites, that's great, and you don't have to worry about it. But if they don't have opposite signs, if they're both gonna still be positive, or both gonna still be negative, then whatever you have to multiply by also has to be negative, okay? Then I can, again, cross these out, negative 15C, okay, because that's a positive five and a minus 20, so that's minus 15C, and 51 minus 96, negative 45. Divide both sides by negative 15, C equals three. Here again, I'm not going to finish this entire problem for the video, this doesn't, nothing is different from here forward. Um, it's the beginning that's tough, okay? Have a good day, see you next time.